Hey guys, it's B here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It feels so weird to film a sit-down video like this because all of my content is usually vlogs, but I decided to film this video because I feel like for some of you guys this may be very useful, especially if you're interested in architecture, since this video is going to be basically me telling you my experience with architecture school, what to expect when you first get into architecture school, or just fun facts that like, even if you're not really interested in architecture, you can still watch this out of curiosity or maybe just keep it all together, it's up to you. But I just felt like for some people this may be important, so I'm just gonna get straight to the point. Architecture school, <laughs> okay? So my journey with architecture school started in 2017 uh, when I decided I want to be an architect. And in 2017, as a reference, I was 17 years old. And I feel like that's about time when you kind of need to choose if you want to get into architecture or not, or at least in Romania. Because at first I was thinking, like, should I go to study architecture in another country or should I study it in Romania? Because I am from Romania, so the easiest way would be to just stay here. So I decided to stay in Romania anyways. And the back backstory was the fact that I was really interested in interior design at the beginning, because that's what really first got me into architecture. I was the kind of kid who would draw a lot, first of all. Second of all, I would keep redecorating my room all the time. In 2017, I decided that I want to pursue architecture as my future career. So what did I do? I started going to drawing lessons, as I called them, or architecture lessons, but more or less drawing lessons. A sure way for me to build my drawing skills in order to be able to have a portfolio or basically to do well at the admission exam for university because for the university in Romania, where I currently study at, the Minku University of Architecture and Urbanism, you need an admission exam in order to be uh, accepted at university. I've heard that for other universities abroad um, you need the portfolio or both an admission exam, I'm not really sure, but for my university in particular you need an admission exam basically. I don't know for how it is for foreign students, but for us in Romania you need an admission exam. Now things have changed after the pandemic, I'm pretty sure, but uh, when I had the admission exam for university, basically the admission final grade was 80% the grade that you got at the exam and 20% the grade that you got at the baccalaureate, which is the national exam in Romania that you have to take when you finish the 12th grade, which has nothing to do with architecture, it's just Romanian math and biology, that's like the baccalaureate uh, subjects that I took. So nothing to do with architecture, but yes. So back to my point, I was 17, interested in architecture, I decided to take drawing lessons and I did that for two years, but what to expect when you go to drawing lessons before applying to architecture? Well, it takes a lot of time, it's not like normal tutoring lessons, it's four hours, or yeah, in 12th grade we were doing like nine, nine hours a week, so basically our whole Saturday was just drawing lessons. And at the drawing lessons we were basically doing either freehand drawing or technical drawing, we were doing like descriptive geometry, exercises or learning about international architects, national architects. So yeah, before you take the admission exam, you need to have some general knowledge about architecture, both international architecture and Romanian architecture. So throughout these two years, it was really fun because I was attending the drawing lessons and I learned how to draw. Yes, at the end of 12th grade, we had the exam. Like after two hard years of learning how to draw, learning how to hatch, learning how to do a perspective, learning how to do descriptive geometry, learning all about international architecture, making friends, making memories. It was all really fun. After those, the exam came. And the exam was hard because first of all, our university has three faculties. The Faculty of Architecture in Romanian, the Faculty of Architecture in English, then interior architecture and urbanism or urban planning. I wanted general architecture, so architecture in Romanian, even though, you know, I told you that I was interested in interior architecture, interior design at the beginning, but I was told that, oh, general architecture is more broad, but I still wanted to make sure I get in summer. So I had three admission exams for each of these faculties. I got over the admission exam, which was a hard exam. I'm gonna talk about the architecture one, it was difficult. We had five hours and had to we had to solve like six exercises. We've obviously did like models, like admission exam models before taking the admission exam, so we knew what to expect. But guess what? Exactly in the year in 2019 when I had the admission exam, 
everything was completely different than what was given before the exam. So that was a surprise. Usually they give like exercises with descriptive geometry, then some like freehand perspective drawings, you know, like for example, drawing a building, you know, without actually seeing it. So basically just from your mind, how you remember it. Because back then I knew how to draw like a lot of buildings from memory, which was amazing. Now I can't do that anymore. Or like designing something yourself. Our exam was more difficult because it was something very new. It was just an exercise about the village museum in Bucharest. And basically we just had to draw some perspectives from different ways and angles from, you know, like there was this pavilion and we had to draw that pavilion as seen from a window and as seen from outside and as seen from like you know we had to imagine that this pavilion was actually a scale model and we had to imagine you know we had to do like an aerial view of that scale model if it makes sense so it was weird and also we had some descriptive geometry it was extremely weird but i got in somehow and as we say, you get in, but you don't know if you get out. <laughs> because now let's just talk about architecture in general. So what you're choosing, like if you want to choose architecture, it's tough. It's one of the hardest majors in the world. I'm just going to say that again. It's one of the hardest majors, programs, universities that you can choose. I'm just saying that. And it shows you feel like it is many times many times you feel like it is no one is exactly hard about architecture the fact that it's not very intellectually stimulating so to say because like it's not like very hard like the information is not really difficult to process like you understand there are very common sense things it's just a huge workload and if you know nothing like me like okay i knew how to draw i was attending these drawing lessons but let me be clear, I was by no means very good at drawing, like ever. I knew nothing in the first year. I was just thrown into an ocean of unknown and told to do this, do that, do this, do that. And I knew how to do nothing, like nothing. I had to do watercolor painting, never did that before. I knew how to use a pencil, that was what I knew. So yes watercolor painting. I had to draw using like fine liners and isographs. I did not know what an isograph was until the first year and when I found out I hated it because every time you draw with an isograph on a paper stains, a lot of stains. Ugh. But yes, basically the beauty of architecture. I did not know how to do scale models. You need to know how to draw, especially in the first year because afterwards you're just gonna do everything on your computer which is nice and fine by me but like it was a shock in the first year guys it was a shock because a lot of people knew how to draw believe me i had classmates that like they brought drawings and i thought they were pictures i remember saying there with my friends and be like are those pictures or drawings <laughs> oh so it was a notion of unknown. That's what I'm trying to say. Like the first year is the hardest because you just don't know what's up with this. You don't know how to do a model. It was hard. I remember my first year doing three different models. I, I was on the bus with three different models, guys. A model, a model made of metal. I had to cut metal. That was my peak moment of life. And yeah, woods, like endless nights spent drawing and uh, like I didn't pull many all nighters. Like many people think, oh, you're gonna pull many all nighters. No, like if you prioritize your time. But in the first year, it's hard because you don't know what you're doing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like with with your friends in architecture school, it just it hits different because you've seen each other, you've been there for each other through thick and thin. Like you've seen each other in all different states because architecture makes you go crazy sometimes again i'm just gonna say that again so you know i warned you and i feel okay and i'm sleeping i'm going to sleep well tonight knowing that i told you that it's one of the hardest universities in the world don't tell me i didn't warn you but if you love it you love it you're gonna make it you if you love it you love it you are gonna thrive but you need to know you love it. And, you know, 
it was many times I've asked myself, do I love this? Am I am I really into this? Like, is this really what I want to do for the rest of my life? Because nobody prepares you. You don't know what you're going to be doing. It's like construction sites and details and technical details and like actual building stuff. It's a lot part of architecture. And I feel like we're just taught to see the final product. You see the Barcelona Pavilion and you're like, wow, that's amazing. I will also do that someday. And then you realize that it's it's a whole lot of work until there. Like it's a lot of work and it's a lot to learn. And yeah, you learn by doing, which is fun, but hard. You don't really know what you should be learning. And I'm still confused about how it's best to learn. And yeah, on top of studio, you also have like six courses to take and to study and to attend to, which is kind of impossible because studio takes a lot of time like a lot of time like if you really want to make it good it takes a lot of time but yes uh, afterwards like after the first semester of the first year the pandemic came and things changed like from home it was much easier i feel like but much lonelier like now i just feel really good that i can see my friends every day and work together it's just so much better to work with people and you like ask people when you don't know. Like you can't, like another thing, you can't get through this university without friends or without people around. You can't get through this alone. And I know what I'm saying. Like when I'm alone, I just feel bad. Like literally bad, like I wanna give up. Like, you know, it's really important to have friends who support you when you're feeling down and you have to support them when they're feeling down because it's gonna be a lot of times when you're gonna be feeling down. And yeah, because you attach to your projects and sometimes at Crit, your projects get demolished. But the thing is, like, the teachers want the best for you and the tutors want the best for you. And, you know, like, I used to get so upset because they would change my project so many times and I felt like a failure. But now, like, I just feel like people are really interested in doing their job right. And it's nothing to do with you. Like what they say about our project, they literally just want to help. And you don't have to take it personally. You just have to, you know, get used to it and literally try your hardest not to, you know, take things personally and just try to do as they say because you usually know better and don't try to reinvent the wheel. Like in the first year, you can experiment a lot, but starting the second, third year, you really have to really try to take into consideration like the site where you build and yeah you have to do something that can be actually built uh, not some crazy things so you know your tutors know better because they have much more experience and that's what I've come to learn so listening to them is usually the best thing you can do they may not click with you or vibe with you 100% or maybe their ideas won't sound amazing to you but your projects like especially the projects in school I feel like they're more or less learning projects so they don't have to be 100% your style like it's hard to define a style for yourself while in school because you're still learning a lot of things and yeah it's it's a lot of learning by doing so this is this is what I can say this is what I can how I can describe architecture school it's just a lot learning by doing and yeah, there's not really a recipe of how to learn. This is what drives me crazy because I've always been a very, very planned and organized person. Architecture school is just a lot of chaos, like a lot of chaos, but you have to get used to it. You have to know that your life's gonna be more chaotic. It's gonna be fine, you have to get used to it. You have to still try to plan things. Like your plans won't turn out well, probably, because it's really hard to know exactly how long a task is going to take you because sometimes something goes really smoothly and you finish it very quickly sometimes you just have a lot of problems so it's basically learning by doing and a lot a lot a lot of problem solving and it requires your attention a lot like when you go to places like a lot of our teachers told, tell us to just be present in the moment and pay attention to our surroundings because even if you go to the festival if, if you go to the church even if you go to see a movie or party with friends or to a cafe, 
you need to pay attention because there are a lot of things that you see when you go in different places. And the pandemic re really sucked because I wasn't allowed to go to places. And architecture is a lot about like seeing actual spaces that were built, so you get inspired. I feel like the environment overall in architecture can be kind of toxic and you really need to prioritize yourself. So you need to establish a good routine and take care of yourself because it's something that's really hard in architecture school. And I feel like a lot of people talk about this, this toxic environment, toxic culture of pulling all-nighters, overworking, a lot of tasks, a lot of stress. And I've been through that and I've been burnt out. And I wanted to give up architecture and I wanted to quit. And it was overwhelming. Like, prepare for things like this. this these feelings come and go, okay? Like, I used to think that this will last forever, that I'm out of motivation and motivation will never come back. But these things come and go, especially if you have friends who are there for you and motivate you, you're good. Like, you are good because, you know, these feelings come and go. And, yeah, architecture is hard, but it's gonna be worth it in the end, I feel like. Overall, overall, it's worth it if you love it. Like, you don't need to make sure you love it before getting into it because the more, you, the, more, the more time you spend into it, it's gonna be harder to give up if you don't really like it. So try to really get ahead of yourself and try to really understand what this is all about and because I was not prepared like I didn't know what it was about honestly before I got into architecture school and you know I've learned to love it and I've learned to understand what it is about and I've learned to understand what I'm gonna do basically this was it about architecture school let me know if you have any questions down below and I don't really know what else to say because I just rambled a lot but I just hope this was useful for some of you guys thank you so much for watching and bye. I'm not gonna ramble anymore. Bye.